Close, open. Close, open. Close, open. Means this is not a short circuit. Hi. In this video, I'm going to teach you the fastest way to detect any short circuit in any motherboard using just the multimeter. So please stay tuned and do not miss any moment in this video because this video will help you a lot to detect short circuits in just seconds. So let's get started. So we are gonna use this motherboard and the component that we gonna use to detect the short circuit in a fast way is the inductor. This is inductor. This is inductor. Over here we have inductor. So in every circuit you will find inductors as you can see. So the rule here is that the inductor can never be connected to the ground. So please write down. You can never find in the laptop motherboard the inductor connected to the ground. Never. We can even check using the multimeter. So let's select the continuity option here, as you can see. So let's check if the multimeter is seated correctly. Go to the continuity option. So if we put, for example, one probe here in the ground, here we have ground, here ground, here ground, everywhere is ground in the motherboard. If we check this inductor, do you see? You can never find a continuity, a direct continuity between inductor and the ground because the inductor can never be connected to, to the ground in a laptop motherboard. Means if you find any shorted inductor with the ground, means in that place or in that circuit, there is a short circuit. So I'm going to use the multimeter and check all inductors in this motherboard. If you find any inductor that gives like this reading in the multimeter, means we detect the short circuit. And then after that, we can spot the bad component or the exact shorted component. But first, let's take a look in one minute to the schematic in order to prove to you that the inductor can never be connected to the ground. As you can see here, we have the schematic. This is basically the circuit, the three volt, five volt circuit. Do you see? We have here three volts. Here we have the control IC. We have two MOSFETs. We have inductor or coil. We have capacitor. Okay. So here we have inductor. Do you see? Inductor is always exist in the power rail. Do you see? No ground here. So the capacitor here, the electrolytic capacitor is connected to the ground. This is the ground. This resistor connected to the ground. We have this MOSFET connected to the ground. This capacitor also. Also the IC connected to the ground. But do you see? The inductor always connected to the power rail. Even here, in the other side for 5 volts, here we have 5 volts, we have the inductor. Exist always in the power rail. Means, if you find a short circuit or a short between the inductor and ground, means you have a short circuit in this channel. Okay? This is good. Let's see another circuit, for example. Here we have an inductor, here we have 1.5 volt. This is for the RAM. Do you see the inductor? Inductor always in the power rail. Good. So let's now use the multimeter and check all these inductors one by one. First, let's connect the black probe to the ground and then check all these inductors. Let's begin with this one. No continuity. No buzzer. Let's see this. No continuity. Okay, let's move on to the RAM circuit over here. So good, this is good. Then let's go to this inductor over here. No continuity. Then this inductor in the battery circuit. No continuity. Then these two inductors belongs to CPU circuit. 
we have a continuity, a buzz in the multimeter. Let's check this one also. Means we have a short hair. No, guys, this is not short. This is the resistance for the CPU. Okay, so please pay attention. The inductors near to the CPU always gives a low reading. If you remove the CPU, for example, you, you will get a high reading. But because the CPU here is integrated with the motherboard, I, I will use another motherboard to show you this trick. So here we have another motherboard. Do you see, guys, the same working principle? If I put the black probe here in the ground, okay, and I check this inductor, do you see? Always, and check this inductor, do you see? Always we get a high reading in the multimeter. But if we go to the CPU circuit, do you see? We get a lower reading, okay? This is not a short. I will prove to you why. So let me remove the CPU. So let's unscrew the CPU like this, as you can see. So let's now remove the CPU as you can see. You see, the CPU is removed. Let's check again. So the black probe in the ground here and check this inductor. Do you see in the multimeter? We get a high rate. Means this is not a short circuit. Okay. If we put back the CPU, as you can see, let's check. Back. We have a low rate. I can even make it easy for you. So do you see? If I open the CPU, you see, high rating. If I close the CPU, low rating. Open, high, close, low. Do you see, guys? Means this is not a short circuit. The low rating is for the CPU, not a short circuit. So I can even check another motherboard just for beginner in order to understand 100% what I'm seeing because a lot of technicians, especially beginners, when they find like this reading in the multimeter, they say we have a short circuit here. And because the low reading is not just in inductors, you can find it also when testing the MOSFETs, as you can see, or even all components near or above the processor. But if you remove the processor like this, okay, the processor now is removed. Do you see? No short. So please remember this trick. So for our motherboard, we didn't have any short circuit here, even if we find near to this integrated CPU a low reading. Okay? Even if we have a low reading, means it's not a short circuit. Let's see another motherboard where we have a real short circuit. So please look, this is a motherboard over here. Do you see? The CPU is removed. Here, the CPU is removed. So if we check, these two inductors near to the CPU, let's check, we have zero. Even if the CPU is removed, we have zero. Means we have here the short circuit. Also, the tantalum capacitor, you gonna find zero everywhere. Do you see? Here. Also here in the serial capacitors, we have zero, zero, in both sides, do you see? In both sides, we have zero. Means we have the short circuit here. Because if the CPU is removed, this is a good motherboard. If the CPU is removed, you should not get here a short. You should get a high rating. Do you see? Here, the CPU circuit is good. So how we can spot fastly the short circuit in this kind of motherboards. I'll show you how. Let's see the schema. So let's see the circuit that generate 1.5 volt for the RAM. So if you understand the circuit, you can understand any circuit. 
please pay attention because this is the most important in this video okay so let's assume that we find that this inductor is shorted to the ground and we know that the inductors should never be connected to the ground so if you find a short between inductors and ground means we have a short here so the probable component that can be shorted are all component that is connected to the ground including the IC the control IC do you see here the control IC is connected directly to the ground as you can see connected directly to the ground then we have this MOSFET the lower MOSFET connected directly to the ground. Then we have this electrolytic capacitor connected directly to the ground. Then we have this thermal capacitors, the input thermal capacitors. All these four capacitors are connected to the ground. But how we can spot fastly the bad component? Okay. Now we assume that we have a short circuit in this circuit so what you have to know is that the short could be in this part here so this part is the input part the input voltage that is connected over here we will get plus v but as you can see here we have plus v but so this is the first part where we have high voltage plus v but about 19 volts and we have the second part where we have lower voltage or low voltage about 1.5 volt so first the short could be here in this part where we have high voltage or in this part where we have low voltage so the third step is to separate the high voltage from the low voltage how by removing this mosfet you see the the only connection between this stage here and this stage here is this mosfet so the first step is to remove this mosfet and then isolate this part from this part and then check the inductor there is two states when you remove this mosfet there is two states the short if the short is in this part here you will not find a short between the inductor and the ground because you isolate the shorted part here so if you remove this mosfet and the short is disappear means you have problem here in one of these thermal capacitors or in the v bat power rail means charge circuit but when you remove this MOSFET and the inductor still connected, still shorted to the ground, means those thermal capacitors and the V bat or the 19 volt rail power rail is good, means you have problem here. It could be thermal capacitor, it could be this MOSFET, it could be the ice. So when you remove the MOSFET and the inductor still shorted to the ground, then go ahead and remove this inductor so in this case the short will be either here because this one is removed it will be either here in this side or in this side if you find that the short in this side here means you have problem with this mosfet or the ic okay but if you find that the short in this side when you remove the inductor means you have problem here as you can see you have problem with this capacitor okay guys please if you have any question in the comment below and please don't forget to subscribe share the video and for anyone who want to accelerate learning you are very welcome join me in, the, in my Patreon page I can be your mentor if you choose the mentorship membership all links in the description thank you very much and see you in the next video